Man Up, brought to you by Construction Professionals, a program dedicated to inspiring and helping men live lives of heroic virtue. Join Joe Stopulis and Father Zach Kowski every Monday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio. And now, it's time to man up. Another year goes by, more beers, more smoke. Welcome to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We are broadcasting from the Mercy Live Up Studios. Heard on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, 94.5 FM, around the globe, streaming on, uh, at, online at iowacatholicradio.com and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app. Also, please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and like us on Facebook. I am Joe Stopulis along with Father Zakowski, and today we are joined by Alan Hunt, and we will discuss the topic of becoming a better husband and father. Father Zach, would you please open us up in a word of prayer? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, help us to be men after your own heart, to mirror you and model your love to, to our children both our spiritual children, our biological children, whatever vocation we're in. And for those who are seeking their vocation, we ask you to give clarity, help them in their daily habits to become the men that you have created them to be. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And that's a great topic, becoming a better husband, and father. father, and I think that's good for that priests could be the as well. Of, that could be the topic of every show of ours. It really Maybe could be. Change, that change the, the name the of the show. ongoing show. It's a little clunky. It's, yeah, it's a little long. It's not as quite as uh, succinct as, as Man Up, but yeah. it it gets to the message of what we're it's trying to deliver. Yeah. So, uh, well, unless I'm a single guy, and then I'm not a husband or a father, and then this show no longer you applies to me. become a better fa- yeah. So then we're preparing them to become good husbands and fathers, which is not the goal. All right, happy Lent again. Happy Lent. Moving through. It is. Still doing Exodus 90. I've not, I didn't quit at Exodus 60. I continue to push on yourself. It's a miracle, small miracle, yeah. We, uh, Father Zach and I, we drew straws months ago uh, and became a p- accountability partners for this thing. Uh, so we actually quite frequently will check up and see how the fast is going, see how the, uh, the Exodus is going. Similarly in Lent. Yeah. Important to do. Uh, find a, a buddy, I don't know, find uh, something to talk about. Yeah, I was Lent. talking to, to our RCIA uh, folks, those who are the catechumens and candidates, and we were talking a little bit about Lent. The presentation was regarding, you know, the season of Lent, and that's one of the things I really hit on was have people that you celebrate Lent with. I think it goes for Advent as well, but uh, to kind of have a team approach. Otherwise, it's just it's really easy to make excuses, at least for me. Especially when you're trying to push yourself, which we all should be. We should yeah. all be pushing ourselves towards greatness, uh, really trying to, I mean, quote unquote, man up, trying to figure out where we need to get better uh, and and push ourselves for that and then use somebody uh, to help us do that. One way to do that would be the uh, Faith for the Journey Men's Conference, which is coming up on Saturday, March 10th. Uh, theme this year, Building Missionary Disciples. It's uh, from 8 till 3.30 at St. Francis of Assisi Church in West Des Moines. Tickets are $30 for adults, 15 for students, uh, $10 for seminarians. And again, the conference runs basically all Saturday. If you could only make it for a piece of it, still come. It these these conferences are just awesome. Uh, you're going to hear on the next side of the break, Dr. Alan Hunt. Dr. Alan Hunt is a he was spoke at the Christ Our Life conference a couple of years ago. He's a, a very sought after speaker, and we're going to hear him multiple times throughout the day. So again, that's an opportunity uh, as you think about Lent uh, and growing closer with the Lord. This is a perfect opportunity if you can make it for an hour or two, still worth your time. So we're going to do a short break, and when we return, Dr. Alan Hunt will be with us to discuss the topic of becoming a better husband and father. Thank you, Construction Professionals, for underwriting our show, Man Up. Construction Professionals have been long supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio, and we've seen their work firsthand. It's very impressive. They do remodeling or new construction that is innovative, functional, and designing what you want. cpcustomhomes.com. Welcome to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We are broadcasting from the Mercy Live Up Studios, heard on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM. Around the globe, streaming online at iowacatholicradio.com and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app. I am Joe Stopulis, along with Father Zakowski, and today we're joined by Dr. Alan Hunt. 
Dr. Hunt is an international speaker and author. He stepped aside in July of 2007 as senior pastor at an evangelical Methodist congregation in Georgia, serving more than 15,000 persons each week. On January 6, 2008, on the Feast of the Epiphany, Allen converted to Catholicism. This transition represented the culmination of a 15-year journey in which God began leading Allen home to the church. Much of his journey has been chronicled in his powerful best-selling book. Uh, you've probably heard of it, Confessions of a Megachurch Pastor. Today, we're going to speak with him on the topic of his newest book, Becoming a Better Husband and Father. Welcome to the show, Dr. Hunt. Hey, guys. Welcome to the uh, show. <laughs> that, that's not my book. I was going to say, this is not your newest book, though. Yeah. Well, I, well, I don't have that. I, that's, not, that's not a title of anything I ever wrote. No, sorry. That, that was a misprint on our half. That is the title of the show that we're doing, Father. That oh, was my I'm fault. sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, I, I just want to make sure that that was No, the, actually, so let me give you the... the <laughs> that's not the title of the book. What <laughs> that gonna, is is... No, the topic of the show. Issue. No, the title <laughs> of the book is 21 Undeniable Secrets of Marriage. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, um, gotcha. Oh, the, let me change The book itself, or the the title of the the show is from John Leonetti. So I shot John Leonetti a text and said, hey, we're having Dr. Hunt on to discuss the men's conference uh, and a topic of your choice, John. And John said he nails becoming a better father and husband. So that is the title we'll, of the we'll show, that, not yeah. the title of the book. Actually, you could write a book there. by that name. See, there you go. Anyway, I was going to say And then we wouldn't have to edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just want to make sure I'm not taking credit for somebody else's book title. I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> nope, you did not take credit for a book, and we're going to talk about your book later on in the episode. But again, the title of the, the show is uh, Becoming a Better Father and Husband. And I think that can be done at the men's conference coming up here in a couple weeks uh, on March 10th at St. Francis of Assisi Church in West Des Moines, where you will be speaking. Indeed. I'm looking forward to I mean, as you know, guys, I, I love coming to Iowa. I, for some reason, I, I've been to Iowa three or four times over the last several years, and I just, I've just i fallen in love with the state. The people are just fantastic, so I'm looking forward to being there. Well, we're excited to have you again, and the men's conference is on, I think, our fifth year, something like that, sixth year, I'm being told by the, uh, Deacon uh, Tom, who's with us, uh, that we are in our sixth year, and I've been to uh, five of six. And they are. It's always a great time. It's you always walk away fulfilled. It's a shot in the arm. It's a, it's a kind of a steroid shot for your faith. Curious on what you will be presenting to the men that day. Well, yeah. First, I, I'm with you on that, Joe. In terms of the uh, just the the sheer joy of being around a large group of men who all share the same faith and the energy that comes from being there. Um, I, I love being a part of these men's conferences whenever they happen. Mm -hmm. um, and so I am, have been given the um, unusual task of being the opening and the closing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, um, and then we're going to have a lot of good stuff in between. And at the beginning of the day, I'm going to kick the day off with the number one reason I, I love being Catholic. And I'm going to share some of my own journey, which may be familiar to some guys, and what's kind of central and important um, to me and why... Uh, as Father Zach shared in my own journey, why I left what I was doing to become Catholic and really felt like I had no other choice. And just the sheer beauty of what we have in the faith to kind of get the guys um, stirred for a great day. And then at the end of the day, because it's in the middle of Lent, I'm going to talk about how to have your best Lent ever and how the greatest joy that we could possibly have at Lent is to share Easter with somebody else. And the more you give your faith away, the more you have. And so I'll share some of some very helpful and inspiring ways to, to do just that, to, to share Easter with somebody that is a friend, a, a coworker, a, a brother, somebody that you love, and that, that will help you have your best Lent and your best Easter ever. Well, and the name of the, the theme of the conference is Building Missionary Disciples. And that's uh, Saturday, March 10th, of 2018, so it's coming up here. And that's 8 to 3.30 p.m. at St. Francis of Assisi Church uh, in West Des Moines. Yeah, so there's really no reason to miss this, guys. If you're in the area, again, Dr. Hunt it's and Trent Horn is going to be there as well. Uh, the, you guys are world-class speakers. This is such a, a joy to have you uh, in our backyard. Uh, and I think we take for granted oftentimes being in Des Moines, having great speakers come through and having great programs come through. We kind of take it for granted a little bit. Um, and this is this is a great opportunity. So, again, we cannot encourage you enough to get out there. Uh, you can meet Dr. Hunt. You'll be you'll be uh, signing. Father Zach and I are signing autographs. I'm assuming you'll are be you, doing the same. Are you charging for well, autographs, sir? Yeah, Trent's a world-class speaker, and, and I'm a speaker. You're <laughs> 
<laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you, you'll be, be there I'll with, be, I'll with be your... I'll handing you guys pens. As you well, you know it. what? If you get your new book, Becoming a Better Husband, husband yeah. and Father, before <laughs> then, you can sell copies of it. <laughs> so you better get writing Just get quickly. writing. Uh, I got about uh, yeah, two days to get that thing out. We're, we almost got it. Yeah. So we'll have we'll have number one reasons uh, you love being Catholic in the morning, and then best Lent ever. Two great topics. Uh, so if, if, you, if you haven't heard uh, Doctor Hunt, uh, well, I guess you were you were just Mister Hunt back then. Uh, you were just Alan Hunt. Now you're Doctor Hunt. But if you haven't heard the uh, his his talk on the confessions of a mega church pastor uh, or read the book, again, we can't encourage that enough. It's a it's a great read, and your talk on it's awesome. Um, and then best Lent ever, Father Zach and I. Uh, speak often about embracing the liturgical seasons uh, and and using Lent as a time to really try to grow to look more like Jesus. And I love your message that you're going to deliver uh, about bringing people through to an Easter season because that's what we. I mean, society needs that more than ever. Yeah, I mean, this is a season of evangelization, man. As the as the culture gets increasingly um, in need of hope and of light. Uh, that's what the church is, and that's who we are. And as Father Zach said, the theme is building missionary disciples. And what it means to be a missionary disciple is to carry hope and light and life to the world, uh, not to sit back in a fort uh, and protect ourselves from, from a culture. Yeah, and uh, could you maybe speak to just the season of Lent? Um, I know, especially as the weeks wear on, you know, the midway point of Lent can get really tiresome for some people. And uh, any... Can you speak to that a little bit to the men that might be listening right now that maybe are worn out? Yeah. And I'm looking at myself first. Yeah. You, know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I've always been amazed at two things about Lent. And one is um, the power of it, which we'll come back to in a second. But second is the attraction of it to people who are um, kind of on the edge of the church, people who are, are sort of loosely engaged and, and maybe just show up for Mass every once in a while. There's still this remarkable power that Lent has, um, as we saw on Ash Wednesday. Um, how many people come on Ash Wednesday that we really don't see them a lot of the rest of the year? There's, even though it's not a holy day of obligation, they come because there's, there's something that draws us toward God in Ash Wednesday as the portal or the doorway toward um, toward God and toward Easter. And so I think that's where the power of Lent comes in, that even those of us who are asleep in the faith or, or hibernating in the faith um, or even just fallen away from the faith, we still know there's this incredible power in Easter and Good Friday and then in the 40 days preparing for that. And so um, my wife and I this Lent have had a kind of a special prayer focus uh, for the two of us as the thing that we've really tried to, to um, zero in on, something that we've been talking about for years that we just kind of privately wanted to do. Um, and it does. You're right. The, the, the journey can turn into a long slog if you're not careful. But I think it's to continually refocus ourselves and, and look at that um, holy weekend and that holy week and, and be drawn toward that, almost as if you're going through the desert as Jesus did, and you see the... Um, the water source there, the life source at the end of the desert, and you just kind of keep pushing toward that, knowing that um, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, uh, the Trinity Woman Easter, it, it, it's all coming. Well, that's a great segue into your your actual book, The 21 Undeniable Secrets <laughs> of Marriage, that you wrote in 2015. Um, and you said the secret of purpose. Uh, in, in the beginning of your first chapter, it says, if you're going to be married, you have to know where you're going. Blessed is the couple who understands their marriage as a pathway to heaven. I think it's a great way to set up the book and, and, the, and the purpose of marriage. And obviously you and your wife uh, in Lent working together uh, are, are experiencing that. Can you, can you elaborate on the, uh, the secret of purpose as, uh, as one of the 21 secrets? Yeah, and I mean, I think the secret of purpose is, is true for marriage, and it's, it's really true for a lot of things in our lives, is that oftentimes when uh, we're going through stuff, we never stop to ask, you know, why am I doing this? What's, what's the purpose of this? And when we're making a decision of where to send our kids to school, you know, what are we trying to achieve with this? What, what's our purpose when we're um, thinking about what job we want to do or what career we want to have or even how we want to spend a day off? What's my purpose here? So to always kind of back up to that question um, helps to put things in perspective and helps you to kind of get things in order uh, on the front end. And for obviously for marriage, um, I, I think that – the temptation is to, first of all, never, I mean, having, I mean, Father Zach can speak to this 
better than I can, uh, as many weddings and marriages as you've been a part of, how few people even ask, what's the purpose of getting married? I mean, I like you. I love you. It seems like a fun thing. And I right. want to spend the rest of my life with somebody, so let's do this. Um, as opposed to, what's the purpose that we're doing? And to put it into that context of, this this really is a sacred journey. And I mean, as a sacrament, it's a sacred bond. And what's God up to in this? What does God want for us in this? And as you just read that that little bit there, Joe, the, the notion that... Um, my wife and I are on a journey to heaven together, and part of my role as her husband is to, is to help her um, be prepared and get ready for that. And part of her role as my wife is to help me. Her, <laughs> hers is a much tougher task. I than was going to say, my wife has got a hell of a task. Uh, yeah, she's she's dragging me, kicking and screaming <laughs> yeah. along with her. <laughs> anyway, I was going to make a bad comment, which I was <laughs> probably, probably wise at this point. And then uh, you speak about the secret of synergy. Can you talk a little bit about that? You don't usually hear the word synergy in, in marriage. In, in marriage, yeah. Yeah, synergy, you, you think about, I mean, typically whenever we when we think about um, math, we think that one plus one equals two. Um, and when we think about marriage, people say, you know, marriage is 50-50, when really marriage is 100-100. Um, and so in marriage math, one plus one equals one. Uh, that the... That the the sum of those two is not what you think it is. It's either one plus one equals one or one plus one equals three, but it's not one plus one equals two. And when you put the two together, something special and sacred happens, and you actually become larger than yourself as you grow together, um, and that, you, again, you become a better version of yourself in, in doing that. And so um, hopefully in making those decisions on who you marry and then how you behave after you marry, you continue to make each other better, but there's also the, the unity you create a whole nother oneness. Um, the marriage itself is something larger than either of you by by yourself, or even just the sum of the two of you. If Father Zach and I recently uh, to ha- to kind of celebrate National Marriage Week, we had on Adam Story, who is the uh, head of Marriage and Family Life up here, and did an episode uh, on the the aspect of that it's a sacrament of service. The, sac- uh, the the church recognizes marriage as a sacrament of service. And to your point. You know, one plus you know, fifty fifty does not work. Fifty fifty right. is, is a losing proposition. Uh, I mean, it needs to be at least a hundred, a hundred, and then I mean, I feel like when you have kids, it's like a hundred fifty, a hundred and fifty, um, because you, you have to just outdo each other in generosity. Because otherwise, you're going to. I mean, you're not. It's not going to work. You've got to give a hundred percent. And I think that the 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 marriages and we talked about this in that episode. The marriages that are the most selfless are the ones that are the most successful every time. Yeah, and I think that I think our culture has lost. Well, I don't think it. I know it actually. It, that we, we've lost that 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 sense where we we've made it into where marriage is about making me happy and meeting my needs. Um, and as long as you're uh, exciting to me and you're meeting my needs and I'm happy, um, then then this is good. As if somehow marriage was about me being served as opposed to me serving um, something larger than myself. And when you go into it, you know, I, I talk about. You know, the, the, the notion of baptism, we, we take off our old self, as St. Paul would say, and we put on our new self. And if you, you go into marriage with your old self without your faith, uh, it's all about you and your needs and what you want, and it's all about me. Uh, the marriage is going nowhere. You have a, a chapter, a couple of chapters, one on sacrifice and one on forgiveness. I'm, I'm just curious if you could jump into those for a little bit and talk about the, the aspects of sacrifice and forgiveness in, in a marriage. We are doing the world's fastest tour of the 21 Undeniable Secrets. Well, here's the deal. We only, do you want to make it a four-part episode? We'll do it. <laughs> we, just did, we just did Mere Christianity, and we only had two episodes to dive through that entire thing. Yeah. You should go back and listen to that. It's us just sprinting through the book, being like, just by the book. Just by the book. The podcast, the podcast, come, podcast come, I'm going to play it on four speed. And just, just, you know, we're going to get through the whole book in 14 seconds. Um, the secret of forgiveness is it. In my in my mind, you know, I lead these passion and purpose for marriage events for Dynamic Catholic around the country. This was in Long Beach uh, this last weekend. Awesome. And the the third and final talk of that passion and purpose for marriage event, uh, which is just a half day event, so it's three talks. The, the third and final talk is the most important word in a marriage, and it's not love. Um, and the most important word in a marriage is actually forgiveness, um, because. In a marriage, there's tremendous power for the couple to help each other and also to harm each other um, because you're together every day and you know everything about each other uh, and you see each other in your best moments and your worst moments. 
Um, and there comes a time in the marriage when you realize that you've made a terrible mistake and you've married an actual human being. Um, and hopefully you have the humility to recognize that, that your spouse also has made a terrible mistake and, and she's married a human being. <laughs> and the, the nature of marrying a human being is that human being is going to make mistakes. They're going to be imperfect. Um, and show me a marriage where forgiveness and her first cousin, Grace, are very liberally and generously distributed and, and sprinkled on the relationship every day. And I'll show you a marriage that's going to go the distance and actually be very healthy and very satisfying. But you show me a marriage that lacks forgiveness and grace, that instead of applying that when we realize that we married a human being who makes mistakes and sometimes does things that disappoint us or hurt us, and rather than giving forgiveness and grace, we either resent it or we retaliate, and the marriage can turn toxic um, very soon. And you know, as Catholics, and I mean, just fundamentally as Christians, forgiveness is the centerpiece of who we are. And if it's the centerpiece of who we are, it then becomes the centerpiece of our marriage. Uh, and that's what leads to a healthy and whole relationship. The book is The 21 Undeniable Secrets of Marriage. Uh, go out and buy it because we couldn't cover the whole book uh, in the interview. We tried. We, 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 we gave it 110%. <laughs> Uh, so let's let's and we got a couple minutes left, maybe uh, using this Lenten season and then the working title of becoming a better husband and father. Any advice you'd have to help embrace this season uh, and, and kind of inspire the guys to to become a better husband and be better fathers? Yeah, I mean, you know, as you know, I'm a part of the team at Dynamic Catholic, and one of the things that we say a lot is our lives change when our habits change. And Lent had, Lent is all about habits. Mm-hmm. And you got 40 days. If you do something for 40 days, it becomes a habit. Mm-hmm. And so what's the one, don't try to change three habits or seven habits. And no matter where you are in Lent at this point, when you listen to this, um, it's not too late. Even if you only got six days left of Lent by the time you listen to the podcast, it's not too late. Pick one habit and focus on it between now and Easter. Um, do that one habit well and it begins to lead to life change. What hap- what the, the trouble we get into is we try to turn our lives around and make a whole bunch of change at one time, and we fail miserably. Change comes in small increments. Pick one habit and watch what happens as you begin to live that out. Um, it will ultimately open the door to other habits, and then our lives really do begin to change, and we become better dads and better husbands. So it's the Iowa Catholic Men's Conference, and the theme this year is Building Missionary Disciples and uh, we'll be privileged to have Dr. Alan Hunt here from Dynamic Catholic. And again, that's Saturday, March 10th of 2018, of course. And that's from 8 to 3.30 p.m. at St. Francis Church in West Des Moines. Dr. Hunt, great uh, yeah, we look forward to hearing. We're going to squeeze all we can out of you, too. We're getting two talks. I know, yeah. The, the, the organizing plus committee a panel. Like, you and, know what? and a panel. This is great. We are. I don't know if you're charging us extra, but we. You know, you're. I'll say this to the listeners: it's thirty bucks. That's it. You get three t- three doses of Dr. Alan Hunt for thirty dollars. Ten dollars a dose. That's about two and a half. The doctor days. isn't. Oh. <laughs> no, no, wrong show. <laughs> wrong show. <laughs> wrong show. <laughs> Dr. Hunt, great talking with you again. We look forward to seeing you in a few weeks. God bless. I'll see you very very soon. All right, take care. Thanks. After the break, we'll be back with Father Zach. So stick around, and we'll be right back. My head. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. I'm Joe Stopulis, along with Father Zach Kautsky, and we just got off the phone with Dr. Alan Hunt discussing becoming a better husband and father, uh, and also the, the the men's conference and Lent. Anything to take away before we get into the, the reading for today? Well, I think uh, for him, I think it's all, everything has to do with relationship uh, for him, so that relationship with his wife or for celibates uh our relationship with the lord our relationship with the church so i think for, for him everything kind of revolves around uh our decisions everything about us with decisions we make and being close in relationship to others yeah and so we have a reading uh today from from uh the letter of saint james blessed is he who perseveres in temptation for when he has been proven he will receive the crown of life that he promised to those who love him. No one experiencing temptation should say, I am being tempted by God. For God is not subject to temptation to evil, and he himself tempts no one. Rather, each person is tempted when lured and enticed by his desire. Then desire conceives and brings forth sin. And when sin reaches maturity, it gives birth to death. 
Do not be deceived, brothers and sisters. All good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I think a, a reading we don't often hear about temptation and the fact that temptation does not come directly from the Lord. He, he allows us to be tempted. We have fallen human nature, uh, but he also will give us the grace to fight temptation, uh, which comes out of our, our own disordered desires. Uh, I don't know if you know this, Father. I named my son James. You did. I did name my son James. You're aware of that. Because he gets tempted a lot. <laughs> I don't know what. No. Uh, yeah, it's my favorite, it's my, it's my favorite book in the Bible. Uh, I think the, oh, it's five chapters, I think, and every word of it just hits you in the face. Uh, if you're looking for a, a way to, I mean, it should almost be the the book of man up because every word of it is right to the right to the point addressing the the faults of, of man. And how to get better and, and what God's expectations of us are. So anytime I hear any reading from James, my ears perk up and get excited. Yes. So, uh, again, this Lent continue to push forward. Uh, Saturday, March 10th, is the men's conference out in West Des Moines. Uh, you can go on to iocatholicradio.com to get tickets or call the phone number. While you're calling the phone number or going to the website, you can also make a tax-deductible donation to Iowa Catholic Radio as we are listener-supported. Thank you again for joining us today. I'm Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio for Father's Kowski, I'm Joe Stopulus. It's time to man up. Man up, inspiring men to live out their call to holiness with Joe Stopulus and Father Zach Kowski. Heard Mondays at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio. Brought to you by Construction Professionals.